Hello everyone, welcome back to the Coding Game channel. In this new series, we will show tips and examples to prepare you for technical interviews, which are famously performed at large tech companies. This first video will cover a simple and well-known algorithms question, which is given a string, write a function that determines whether all of its characters are unique. You can pause the video now if you want to take some time and think about how you would do that. My fake candidate today will be my colleague Corbin from CoderPad. CoderPad is a US-based company that recently merged with Coding Game and together we develop a product which we will be using today to conduct remote coding interviews. So welcome Corbin, uh, can you introduce yourself a bit and tell us what you do at Coropad maybe? For sure, for sure. So my name is Corbin, uh, I've been a developer for about seven years now. Uh, lately, within the past year, I've joined Coderpad as their developer relations specialist. Uh, so that means that I talk a lot about interviews uh, and I uh, try to be loud about making the best practices as possible and uh, hoping to help improve the interview experience for everyone. Do you need me to clarify anything about the question uh, before we get started? Yeah, so uh, I think I'd be curious to know like what car sets are being used, right? Like, is it just going to be Unicode? Is it going to be ASCII? Like, what car set are we expecting in this uh, uh, function string? Let's uh, let's say only ASCII for now. It's it's all right. And then, uh, how long are we expecting these strings to be? Like, are they going to be like super long, like maybe a couple thousand characters, or is this going to be fairly short, like like twenty or something? Yeah, you can assume they're going to be up to maybe like a million characters, uh, but. Let's not worry about performance for now. Uh, and then something that I like to do is uh, I just like to keep notes in my editor uh, as I'm going, you know, make sure that I understand the requirements of the function that I'm typing out. We want to keep the strings unique, right? Making sure that there's no character that's repeated. Right now, I'm noticing that there is a negative test case where we would expect false. Um, but one of the things that I like to do when coding uh, and not just for, for programming, but also when I'm doing like writing tests is I always want to make sure that I can visibly see the code fail. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add one here where it is duplicating F. So we should expect to see true and then false. So what we can do is I think we can do a really early string return here or, or uh, uh, not a string return, a for loop. Right. So we could say for let I equal zero. I is less than string dot length and I plus plus. Right. We can do two loops. We can say I I and here we could say something along the lines of if string I is equal to string I I return true. What happens if we run that or I'm sorry, I need a return false here, not true. There yes, we go. I think your function will always return false. Mm, let's see. <laughs> You're right. So let's see why it's doing that. Let's do a console log of S, I, and I, I. Oh, okay. So it's matching the very first character, right? So what we should do is we should have a conditional in here. We should say if I is not equal to I, I, and S, I, and S, I, I, right? It's getting a little confusing to read. What I might do is I might refactor the S to string. So now we run, we get the true and the false as expected, right? Yep. You found the mistake and you... Uh, patched it in a uh, nice, uh, nice way. Now, can you uh, optimize that? Can you make your code faster? For sure, for sure. So one of the things that I'm thinking of is that we're using two for loops here, right? But we're we're also iterating through each time we have two for loops that are part of each other, right? So what if we simplified this a little bit? Uh, is there a method to sort a string here? Is it okay if I look up with MDN uh, the string sort? It seems like there is an array sort, but no string sort. So, okay, what we can do, we can do sorted string equals, we're, con we're uh, uh, casting um, using the spread operator from a string to an array. And then here we can do a sort, A, B, A is greater than B, then one, else minus one. And then here we could say something along the lines of four, 
let i equal zero i is less than sorted string dot length and i plus plus right so the idea here is that if we sort a string we should be able to get all the characters exactly like an a would be right next to an a or in this use case the f will be right next to the f right so what i'm thinking is that we can have an iteration where uh, we check if the character in front of it is the same as the character itself and then if they do match then they can't be unique how would you expect this the case to return it's mm, a good question uh do we want to go back to the previous iteration to see how that works because i i'm thinking that that this should be uh non-unique right the f the lowercase f and the uppercase f i would argue are the same character if you want to assume they are not the same character i'm definitely fine with that but just make okay. make sure it's clear for both of us let's assume this to be true for now and then we can take a look at how we can improve that to make that that false in the future all right. So here we can say sorted string i equals sorted string i i or I'm sorry, not i i i plus one. So here we may have an out of bounds error, but I don't think that will cause a problem because like, for example, for this use case, f will not be equals to undefined. So I think we're actually going to be OK here. Or you could just stop your loop just one iteration earlier. No, that's true. We could do that. Uh, and then here we can say return false, otherwise return true. Let's see if this returns what we're hoping for. True, false, true. Awesome. Now, you had mentioned something along the lines here of the ABCD lowercase f, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the easiest way to do that will be to cast these to a lowercase. Before I do that, let's console.log sorted string. So that actually did what we wanted it to, mm -hmm. right? I don't um, think so. Because um... did it not? Let me do that with a lowercase a. Lowercase a, okay. Mm, good point, okay. So then, oh, we could do a sort uppercase, lowercase, and then two lowercase. Will that work? Yeah, I think that gives us what we're looking for. Sure thing. Well, false, false. One thing you could have done to simplify all of that maybe was to convert uh, the string to lowercase directly as soon as you get That's it in true. the function. Um, right, but right. that works this way as well. We could say string dot to lowercase, something like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good optimization because now we're not having to, to do that for each iteration multiple times. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yes, the complexity of your solution now is so n log n um, due to the sort uh, plus n due to your uh, for loop. Do you have any way to make Make it even faster maybe an o of n complexity i think i do so one of the things that we can do is we can keep a, a map right um and i'm gonna actually start with a semi unoptimized route just so that i can demonstrate later like what's an even better way to do this but here we can have something like car map which is a object performance should be good <laughs> have to change the requirements here. So now that we have our character map, what we can do is we can say something along the lines of for each item in the lowercase array or lowercase string. Sorry, it's not an array anymore. Actually, I mm, I want to make this an array just because it has the include method. So we can say if car map dot includes lower string dash I then return false else. And we don't need an else because we're doing an early return. Right, so we can keep it nice flat structure. We can say uh, car map dot push lower string i, and I don't think we need to continue. I think we can just leave it as is. Because otherwise, what we could do is we could say if not, then push and continue. But we don't want to do that. Yeah, is that is that it? True, false, false. Yeah. yeah. One thing is that um, includes has a mm -hmm. slow complexity compared to a map uh, on an array. Right. So I think and, we should convert to a map. And more than a map, we can actually use a weak map because we don't need to iterate through every single item inside of a map. So we can just say weak map, and instead of includes, we can say has, and then instead of push, we can say, oh, is it add? Hang on, MDM weak map. See, it's never never too bad to, to look things up. Set, that's what it is. Set, and we can just say as simple as set one, because we don't really need any valuable data in there. We just need something that that's related. Uh, and then now if we run uh, invalid key value use as a weak map key. Oh, weak maps can only be an object. So the keys to a weak map can only be an object. So I don't know if we can actually do this. Uh, I think we may just have to use a map. Yeah, there we go. I thought that there were less limitations on weak map than there actually are. So turns out a map is for the better. Awesome. Can you tell me maybe how you would test 
that um, code? Yeah, so I might have something along the lines of uh, a truthy value here, right? And then we have a falsy value here. And then these are edge cases for lowercase, uppercase, right? So we have a falsy value. Let's also add in a truthy value. So we can say A, B, C, D, E, F, right? That should be true. And then we might have a version with, you'd mentioned ASCII values. So now we can have a forward slash, um, and then that should be true. It should be false, because we'll add in another one. Uh, I don't know the term for the non-Latin, ASCII codes. Ah, so this is actually false, which is interesting. Even though all of them A, B, C, D, E, F would be true. Interesting. Let's find out why that is. So I think that this is actually a, a pretty simple fix. I think what's happening here is that uh, car map is being set to uh, uh, a global variable here. And as a result, it is failing every future iteration uh, because it is adding in A, B, C, D, E, F, so on and so forth, right? So if we move this instead to the inside of the function, we can now see uh, true, true, false. Hmm, some of these are not quite correct. Why would that be? Why would that be? Let's do a console.log of lower string and lower string dash i. So what I'm noticing is that we actually forgot to remove this minus one uh, because it is not checking the last character from our last iteration, right? Um, so if I get rid of our console log, uh, we can see that it's actually not checking the f and now we should see true, false, false, true, true, false. Okay, I'm gonna ask one last level of optimization if you can find okay. it. What if the string has like 4 million characters in there uh, or maybe 4 billion, like it's a very, very long string. Do you have any ways to make the code even faster? 4 million or 4 billion. Hmm. So we only want to use ASCII, correct? Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually there's a, a pretty simple trick to being able to get this a little bit faster, right? So we know that ASCII can only have a uh, 255 or is it 256? Extended ASCII, you can have all 256 characters. Okay, we'll just say 256, right? So we can say something as simple as if string.length is greater than 256, then return false, right? Because we know that if there are more than 256 characters, one of them must be repeated within the character set. Yes, that's uh, exactly the answer I expected. Well, uh, thank you, Corbin, for joining me. Um, you did great, and you demonstrated all, everything I wanted to show, and even a bit more. So, uh, well, thank you for uh, joining me, and well, we'll see you soon. Yeah, sounds good. Look forward to it. Well, that went great. As an interviewer, there's several things I really appreciated about the way Corbin solved this interview question. First, the fact that he was always communicating and letting me know in advance what he was about to implement really helped me understand his solution. And that is a crucial thing to do if you're being interviewed. It can really make the difference. He was also asking for clarifications whenever needed, which is never a bad thing to do if your questions are pertinent, of course. Even though this interview was not meant to be difficult. Corbin showed um, good knowledge of JavaScript and only had to check the documentation a few times. And he also demonstrated uh, technical ability with simple uh, algorithms and debugging. I hope you learned something from this video to help you maybe with future coding interviews. There will be more on this channel, so please subscribe. Bye.